So there was a man named Colin, and God said that he was gonna hurt Colin about what they out here doing to me and my pregnancy in America, and that Colin must know something about whatever they doing to me in this country. And it's a black man that had been living in an apartment in Jersey Village. So now I gotta go into details because they cut my video off and I had to get more storage, and I'll connect the video somehow, uh, but I'ma go back into where I left off. So they were releasing me from this jail, the Montgomery County Jail in Conroe, Texas, on all of these charges for protecting myself and my son. They charged me for protecting myself and my son and lied about me being pregnant in the jail and tried to murder me pregnant in the jail and had all my family and friends knowing what they were doing and my baby daddy and his mama and family knowing that they were trying to murder me in the jail for protecting myself from my baby daddy and he's white and he got out of jail uh, trying to harm me. So let me just go into detail. So when they was, while I was in jail, they had this man come up there named Sterling and he stays in Montgomery County, Texas. So I'm in Texas, but I'm in Houston. So when all this happened, when they released me, they had a man named Sterling. Before they released me, they had a man named Sterling. They call him Black Jack. He be in, he's, he's, he, you, he be in Conroe, Texas, and he be in Montgomery County, Texas, or Montgomery, Texas. Montgomery, Texas is where it, he, he, he was living. And I don't know if these people still live in these locations or if these were their real houses, but these are the people that's involved with trying to have me murdered pregnant in America for my baby daddy and all these racist white people and so I got to give your information because I'm out here in Texas and they threaten to rape my baby and so I'm giving up all the information about everybody that's involved whether you my family or not whoever you are I'm giving up your information so they had this man come up to the jail while my family was abandoning me to try to help the courts set me up like I should be murdered pregnant in the jail and like I should be given prison sentence or death sentence or something for shooting Austin in the leg because he's white and he's a young white man and he was attacking me and my baby in the house but they felt like that okay she shot him though and he's a young white man so we got to cover up that he was abusing her because she's an older black woman and they got a baby together. She don't got no money. She don't got anything that make any of us care about her or want her. But he's a young white man and he got shot. So we're all trying to set her up to be killed in the jail cell. So while this was going on, they had the police trying to set me up. Everybody on the police squad, everybody that was working in the jail, all the inmates, all my family, friends, they had everybody, people that I didn't even know, celebrities, trying to set me up to be murdered pregnant because Austin was a young white man and Cynthia started threatening to molest my son as retaliation while they were doing all this wickedness saying they were so angry about Austin being shot to where they had my own family turning on me like yeah we gonna let them murder you pregnant in the jail for shooting him but it was self-defense and so they were dropping these charges on me because God was with me telling me that I was not guilty and that my family was evil for trying to sit there and let these white people kill me and then try to be involved with letting them cover up my pregnancy. So I was pregnant in the jail and everybody was trying to cover up that I was in there pregnant and they was trying to murder me and I was pregnant for shooting Austin and they, they let me out, they held me past my labor day torturing me in the damn cell trying to stop me from giving birth and they had doctors and people involved to help them to try to stop my labor in the cell and try to murder me for protecting myself. They had all of my family involved to try to cover up that I was pregnant inside of the jail and that's wrong because then they went to go drop the charges on me after they sued me for my son and threatened to rape my baby and had me going with men so this man named black jack sterling i met him through a girl named angelica that was living in conroe texas when my baby daddy was in prison he was a black man and he was not my baby daddy he was not the man that i was pregnant by and this man liked me and i did not like this man but he claims that he uh, heard about the shooting and that he uh, uh, looked me up on the jail roster and came to visit me while all my family and everybody was setting me up, not coming to visit me, not answering phone calls, not helping me with my lawyer. My lawyer, Inger Chandler, was betraying me about the evidence while they had my son threatening to rape and molest my son. My lawyer was betraying me and she was a white woman named Inger Chandler that was not doing everything that she could to get me released on the charges and let 
let them sue me for my son and threaten to rape my little boy. Your lawyer is not supposed to allow people to get her client's baby and threaten to molest and rape her client's baby and then kill her client baby in her body in the jail and let her out with a baby in her and she was innocent. So around the time they were dropping the charges, they had sent this black man up there and he was visiting me trying to pretend like he cared and I was giving him the information telling him the baby was still alive in my body and that they were torturing me and denying me medical care and that I was innocent and he was trying to pretend like he cared about me and when they were releasing me he would not show up to come and get me and then the baby was still alive in me and they said they would go ahead and release me on my own so I started walking um, out I got let out of the jail to go and get my identification from the man at the front and my release papers and that I was being released on these charges and by this time they had told Cynthia she could have my baby temporarily and I was still pregnant with the baby that they were torturing me with in the cell and everybody knew about it my family and they already had it set up to try to murder me when I was released from the jail pregnant and so I came um, out of the jail and the man Black Jack Sterling came running up as a setup to come and tell me that I could come to his house after my sister Shakina and my none of my family showed up to come and pick me up pregnant in that state after these people did that to me and took my son and threatened to rape my son and they released me on these charges and they still would not even show up to come and pick me up still trying to go through and setting me up to be murdered so I went with these people by not helping your family member that's being released like that on these charges for protecting herself with this baby still alive in her body and you still refusing to come and get me after they released me on the charges and let these people still continue to try to set me up the way that they have and I have to go into the details of what they trying to do because they threatened to rape my child and then think you're going to put me six feet in the ground and stop me from telling the truth that I was pregnant the entire time. Okay. So the man Blackjack told me when I was released that night, he said, hurry, you can come to my house with me. And he took me to a trailer in Montgomery, Texas. And they had the door wide open with a water bucket attracting a lot of mosquitoes, causing me to get bit up by mosquitoes on purpose in the house and having me lay in the bed with him and having him try to refuse to take pictures of my pregnant belly when I asked him. And he took photographs of my body from the side to show how I was pregnant, being released from the Montgomery County Jail in Conroe, Texas, August 2019. And then and he tried to force me to have sex with him and he tried to give me pills and he tried to starve me inside of the home and his father was in the home with his girlfriend and then he started getting violent the first night and I went and got food stamps and got clothes and I met Shakina my sister and she gave me $200 and I showed her my belly and she tried she touched it and tried to act like she didn't care about us and then she drove off and left me with the man and he took me back to his home and tried to get violent with me and threatened to call the Conroe police and then say that I was crazy and say oh do you want me to call those crazy people and you on you because they threatened to rape me in the jail when they threatened to rape my son they threatened to let all these black men in this country rape me and then they threatened to let them rape my son with Cynthia and so then they had me in the home the first night with this man with him trying to rape me in the bed and trying not to tell the truth that I was pregnant from the first time that I got released and I told the man to drop me off. I told I got ready that night while he was asleep. I did not sleep with him. I got myself together with the clothes. I bought the money with money from, that my sister gave me. When they did the, uh, gave me the food stamps, they checked my record and said that nothing was on my record. And I told them that I was abused getting out of jail and that I was pregnant. And everybody did not want to acknowledge that I was pregnant. From the moment that I was released from the jail, the man did not want to take pictures of my body showing that I was pregnant and how I was released when I left with him from that jail and I left with Black Jack Sterling from Montgomery County Jail and it was a setup and I was pregnant and they made me go into the house with this man in a trailer and I told him to drop me off after he tried to get violent with me slamming stuff inside of the home and I refused to have sex with him and I told him to drop me off by Fiesta in Conroe Texas which is where I lived in that neighborhood in that city and there was a Salvation Army right there and I was going to 
walk to the Salvation Army. This was like my third day, second or third day out of the jail. And I knew my family didn't really want to have anything to do with me based off of how they interacted me while I was in the jail and when I got released and when I showed her that I was pregnant when she met me to give me the $200 and that they had starved me and did all this wickedness to me and my body inside of the jail. And so I went to, um, I had him drop me off and on the way to him dropping me off, he was driving the car and I had contacted my sister Larissa and Andrew um, uh, Jones, their father or my father, and I contacted him and I told him that I was at this man's house and that this man, Blackjack, was trying to get violent my first night out of the jail and that I could not be around that, that I had been around this man attacking me at my home and I shot him and that I did not need to be in another environment with another man trying to bring physical harm to me and I knew that I was pregnant and I knew why my family was going to try to allow me to be in that environment because they wanted that man to try to hurt me and they wanted me to have to protect myself so those Conroe police can come and hurt me and this baby and then turn around and lie and cover up my murder with these people and this is why I'm giving Blackjack's information and what really happened because it's been drug out for too long so Blackjack Sterling um, on the way uh, I, I, I notified my family that I was leaving that location because I called them from the time that I was in the jail to the time that I was released from the time that I had to stay the night at this man's house. I told them where I was staying the night and I told them what he tried to do to me in the house and that I was leaving and I told him to drop me off the next morning and when he dropped me off on the way, he was trying to get violent with me inside of the vehicle and this man knew that I was pregnant and had me dragged back into the back of the Montgomery County Jail after he started visiting me and I told him the baby was still alive and they kept trying to murder me and this baby in the back of the jail and he knew about it and my father Andrew Jones knew about it because I was calling them and Andrew claimed that he called the news and told them but then when they was releasing me on the charges Andrew wouldn't even call Shakina and ask Shakina to come and hurry and pick me up and so they made me go with this man Sterling Blackjack that had already set me up in the jail he did not show up to my court dates um, nobody showed up they didn't even go through with the trial they released me before the pretrial without releasing the evidence that Austin was even abusing me or that I was pregnant and I guess they th thought they came up with the bright idea to release me on the charges pregnant and then just keep on trying to kill the baby in me outside of the jail and let Cynthia keep my baby and set me up outside and try to have me murdered. So the man Blackjack was on his way to drop me off and he started saying, what are you having me drop you off for? Why are you having me drop you off? And my Holy Spirit was like, just be quiet. Do not say anything. You're released on all of these charges. You are pregnant. You know he's trying to harm you and this baby for these people because you shot Austin. Your rights you have rights. The charges were dropped. You have rights to be by yourself away from people that are trying to harm you while you are with child and harm you, period. And they threaten to rape your baby. And I was like, you know, that's okay. I, I just didn't even say nothing. And I was like, let him drop me off. And he was like, you want me to call them people on you? I didn't say anything. So the whole time he started beating on the dashboard and saying, do you want me to call them people on you? And I knew it was a setup. I knew that they had this man trying to create an altercation to where he would try to call the Conroe police and say what my family was trying to allow them to say about me when they were trying to murder me pregnant in the jail was to say that I was a mental patient. They were trying to allow them to drag me into the segregated housing unit in the back of the Montgomery County Jail, take my baby, threaten to rape and molest my son, take me back there pregnant, murder me for this white male attacking me in my home, and he just got out of prison. And everybody in my life knew that I was not a mental patient. All my friends knew that I was not a mental patient. The police knew that I was not a mental patient. It's because Austin was white and I shot Austin in the leg and they had the evidence. So that's what they felt they needed to say to cover everything up was to try to say that I was a mental patient. And this is what they were saying when I was asking for a doctor and why they were trying to murder me. They were saying that, oh, she's a mental patient. And this is where my family came in as a part of the blood ritual because my family knew that I was not a mental patient. They knew that the courts were trying to say that. They knew that they were trying to murder me. And so the man, Blackjack, uh, he kept threatening me and I just asked him to drop me off and I kindly got out of the vehicle and closed the door. So it was almost as if they were trying to have these evil wicked black men try to act like they were going to have some sort of authority over me after I was released on these charges and these people threatened to molest and rape my child and left me with a baby in me but because of racism they had these black men trying to serve racism and be like oh we'll take Andrea I had my own apartment before I went into the jail and then they were trying to send me with these men that were trying to bring me into these locations and stop me from telling the truth about why I went to the jail and what they did to me in the jail and that I was pregnant and that they took my son and threatened to rape him. And so after I left um, Blackjack, he dropped me off in front of the Fiesta. 
in Conroe, Texas, and I walked to the Salvation Army and they were closed. And I went to the Chevron and bought food. That was the first time I was able to have food that was not poison. They had poisoned my trays and my drinks the entire time that I was in Conroe, Texas, trying to murder the baby that I am carrying, which is why my whole family and everybody don't want to tell the truth about why my stomach is big and they got everybody sitting there ready to lie to try to have people around me to try to have me smoking cigarettes and shit like that so a motherfucker can so, so people can say that they never threatened to rape my baby and that I was never pregnant and say that I was had a tumor in my belly and then try to let them murder me like that and so um, the man dropped me off and I went and got some food from the Chevron with the food stamps that I had gotten and uh, I went to the laundromat and sat down and they uh, they had a man named Kiwi come up to me so I have to rewind a little back to Blackjack because Kiwi's uh, sis, Kiwi's cousin Cookie and his auntie, I mean Auntie Cookie and his cousin Cat told me that they knew Black Jack Sterling, who house I just came from, because I told them that I had been released. I told them what my baby daddy did. I told them that I was pregnant, that I did not have nowhere to stay. And Kiwi said that I could stay over there with them. And Reverend Stewart, his grandfather in Conroe, Texas, in Montgomery, Texas, said that I can come and stay with them and that they knew Black Jack. I told them what Black Jack tried to do at his house, that he was trying to make me sleep with him and get violent. And they said that they knew Black Jack Sterling from Montgomery, Texas, and Conroe, Texas, that he had a reputation and that he had a reputation that he was a pedophile. They said that supposedly uh, Blackjack told me himself that he had been locked up for assault. And I did not ask them to send this man up there to the jail to try to visit with me while they were trying to murder me and a baby in my in the jail and then threaten to molest my child. They sent this man up to the jail to get information and then drug me back into the jail pregnant, continue to try to kill the baby because I told him the baby was alive. And then I was at his house and I told them what happened and they said that they knew Black Jack and he had told me at the house or at, at some point when they drug me back to the segregated housing unit, Black Jack opened up to me and told me at some point that he uh, had been arrested for assault, that he had been in jail before for assault and he's not my child father. And they have been trying to pin this on black men as well and they were trying to pin my baby, I believe that I'm pregnant with on this man Black Jack knowing that Austin was abusing me in my home. So that's how we that is going to where my family know that this white man got out of prison and actually got her pregnant and she shot him but you so you hate your family member so much you want to be doing better than your family so bad you want to save yourself so goddamn bad that you're gonna sit there and let these white people lie and say that she was not pregnant by this white man while he was attacking your sister and your family and your cousin and your granddaughter up in the house and then try to have black men coming up to the jail um, and then trying to frame it as if I was pregnant by one of them or something. And so they had uh, this woman, Kiwi and Kat, um, Kat telling me that um, she knew... Um, uh, Blackjack and that he was also a pedophile, that she that there was rumors that he had raped somebody, um, some girl that they knew and that everybody knew about it. And so I told y'all that Cynthia and them threatened to molest him and then this man coming up there and he's a pedophile and there's rumors of him being a pedophile and he was arrested for assault. So they're trying to cover up for a man that was abusing me and he's an abuser and all the men that they have had doing this have been criminals with criminal backgrounds and gangs that molest children and it all still and back to her, stealing my son. So we'll go back to, um, cause God said this is about the man that called and that set me up. So I went to uh, Kiwi and when Kiwi and them auntie was looking at my stomach, and seeing that I'm pregnant um, and Kiwi was feeling it and you can tell that I'm pregnant and then turns out Kiwi has a rape charge. Kiwi had a rape charge and Reverend Stewart had been incarcerated for murder and Kiwi had a, a rape charge that they were trying to charge him on right then and it still hadn't clicked to me that they were sending these black men um, and the shelter was closed and it, it was just magnificently just closed and so I called the Montgomery County Women's Shelter and they were telling me that they uh, were full at the time and that they couldn't I take me inside of the uh, Montgomery County Women's Shelter. And so I ended up uh, staying the night over here and uh, showed his auntie Cookie, his cousin Kat, that I was pregnant. And they were pretending like they cared and then trying to tell me that my baby was dead, that it was a stone pregnancy. First of all, that I still could get medical care even if you wanted to claim that it was dead because they were trying to say that I wasn't pregnant from the beginning. So if you seen my body and that I was pregnant claiming that I had a dead baby in me, then why would you make fun of me and then try to put me out of your home? Oh.
with a dead baby in me. So I have to give information about the second people house who I went to because this was all in the same month. They released me August 22nd, 2019. And this was all in the same month. And the girl had cigarettes and all of this old kind of stuff. And I contacted my sister Larissa and sent her pictures of my body to Atlanta, Georgia, where she was showing her that I was pregnant and uh, that what they had did to me in the jail. And she was saying, you need to go to another state maybe and get the medical care. Um, and But I showed her and um, these people had transported me to Kiwi's auntie's house saying that she would rent a room out because Kiwi was trying to have sex with me. And he was trying to force me to have sex with him. And I asked him not to do that before I came. And he kept trying to force me to have sex with him and his cousins and everybody was trying to kind of force me to be with him. And I went and stayed with Kiwi's auntie next door in this trailer in Montgomery, Texas. And this was only a few days within a week of me being released. And um, his auntie had uh, taken my food stamps um, and I was pregnant and starting to show. Uh, she was taking my food stamps and she was telling me that I had to pay her for a room. And so then she told me because her, her, her nephew was acting violent about wanting to have sex with me that I had to leave her home. And it was not the best living environment, but I figured I could fix it up and just try to get my son and get myself together. And she put me out within a day or two of being there. And then um, Reverend Stewart lured me and said that he talked to Angelica and Kelvin, who introduced me to Blackjack. Angelica and Kelvin are some people from Conroe, Texas, that met me in Austin and knew that I had a baby, a job that I took care of my son, that Austin was in prison, and then uh, said that uh, Kelvin was previously charged for molesting a little girl. He went to prison for statutory rape or for the rape of a girl. And they had uh, Angelica uh, he said that he talked to Angelica and Kelvin and that Angelica was going to help me with a place to stay because Angelica was coming to my home <coughs> visiting me with her daughter and with my and visiting my son while Austin was in prison and then Reverend Stewart told me when he got to his daughter's house that he lied that he did not talk to Angelica and Kelvin that they were not going to help me um, that he just said that uh, to, to, uh, to get me out of his daughter's house um, and make me think that somebody was going to help me and to try to keep them from knowing that I didn't really have anywhere else to go something about like him knowing people trying to set me up but then he he took I called my sister Shakina Jones the one that I called when I was released the one that I was calling while I was in jail the one that God was showing me was doing a lot of wickedness to me while I was in the jail about trying to help Cynthia and them cover up the shooting and that Austin was abusing me and my son and that I was pregnant this is what the Holy Spirit was showing me I called her and I said Shakina can I come to your home so I had already been to two people's houses and this was still August so this was still within the first week of me being released from the Montgomery County Jail pregnant. I called my sister Shakina Jones and Shakina knew that they had took my son and threatened to rape and molest my son. Shakina was involved when they were doing the ritual trying to murder me for protecting myself. My little sister spirit was with Cynthia and Austin and Joseph and everybody that was trying to lie about my case. My little sister and different women in my family uh, that had been in contact with Shakina their spirits was involved with Cynthia Austin's mother that was covering up the evidence that Austin was abusing me and trying to have the police department murder me in the jail cell because Austin is white and because I shot Austin in the leg and then murdered me pregnant. And so I called Shakina and I said, Shakina, um, this was the second house. So the first man, Blackjack, tried to get violent with me. The second man, Kiwi, they were trying to get violent. And these men both had records of being pedophiles and having assault charges um, for uh, raping women and they threatened to rape my son. And I called my sister and being that that's my family member and I knew that they dropped the charges and I needed to get my son from Cynthia Overe and Austin John Metter. They threatened to rape my son and my sister knew about the witchcraft and the visitations and everything. And so I did not bring that up to my sister. I asked her could I come to her home and I feel like she did not want me to come because she did not offer when I showed her my stomach and had her feel my stomach when Blackjack took me to meet her when I first got out and she gave me $200. So to me 
me that felt like she was just giving me $200, like I don't want anything to do with you. And I was like, okay, if Blackjack was gonna be a good friend to me, then I would have just been straight wherever I had to make it without having to ask my family for help. And that turned out to bite me in the ass because they set it up to try to have him harm me in the location for shooting Austin in the leg. And then for them threatening to molest my son. And so I called my sister um, after having gone to these two locations and I said, can I come there? And she said, meet her somewhere and started started treating me as if I was a prisoner or an inmate and um, telling me that I could not have nobody come to her home. And I did not want to have anybody come to her home, but she was already treating me as if I was less than. And when I came inside the home, I was pregnant and I showed her and it was moving and she was trying to make it seem like she could not tell. And God told me that she could look and see that you can look and see the baby moving and tell that I'm pregnant, that you don't even have to put your hand on my stomach to see that I'm pregnant, that you can look and see the baby kicking in my belly. And he said she didn't want to see because she didn't want to help me. That's what he said. And so uh, Shakina uh, and Larissa um, had let me set up an appointment. Um, I had set up an appointment and they wanted all the information. My sisters that God was showing me was wicked. Um, they wanted all the information about where I was going to get an ultrasound from when I got to Shakina's house. And I went to Expectation Studio because they had Baytown Hospitals, Chamber County Hospitals, and all Houston hospitals denying me medical care for my pregnancy because they tried to murder me pregnant in the jail cell. So they had all of them lying and saying that I was not pregnant. So I went to a location that did not require for me to have a provider because all of the providers in Houston were lying and saying that I wasn't pregnant because they were trying to cover up that they tried to murder me in the jail and threatened to molest my son and are setting me up to be murdered with a baby in me. So I said, um... I'm going to get an ultrasound from somewhere that's not requiring me to have a provider. And when I went, my little sister asked me for the information for the people where I made my appointment. God told me that Cynthia Overe and them followed me to wherever I went and got the ultrasound. The woman at the ultrasound studio lied and said that I was not pregnant and tried to crush the baby in my belly with the ultrasound tool. And then I had to run out of her office just like I ran from the hospitals and she was a white woman and she was trying to hurt the baby in me for them and it was called Expectation Studios in Houston, Texas. And everybody is trying to hurt the baby for them or hope it die in me and just say that she got a dead baby in her. So that's what's going on. And as long as I've been carrying, they've been thought that they got away with it. So for the baby to still be kicking in me, they're just showing how far everybody is willing to go to try to hurt us, to where you gonna leave a baby kicking in me for two years and still go on to try to say I was never pregnant. You don't care about the baby and you don't care about me. You will set me up to be murdered and cut up and put in a ditch before you come forward as a family member and tell that you know that I'm pregnant. And that's sad and that's, that's disgraceful. So nobody don't want the baby to come out. Nobody don't want me to get the medical care because that's disgraceful for me to sit a little baby in an incubator and be alive and still tell the truth about what y'all did. You don't want to have to live with that disgrace of being my little sister and did that to me. You don't want to live with the disgrace of being my older sister or anybody involved and have did that to me. And for it had been the man that was coming in my house and attacking me like this. So my little sister um, had asked me to leave her home. I was only there for about two weeks, maybe a week or two. And she had asked me to leave her home. I had asked her to pay. She said she was going to pay for a visit. They was trying to make me go through. Cynthia went through the court, stole my baby's birth certificate and went through the court and tried to say I had to pay $300 per visit to see my son after she threatened to rape my baby, trying to make it seem like I was a threat to my baby. All charges were dropped, so the reason why I needed to stay at my sister's house and have somewhere to stable from the time that I got out of the jail was so that I could get a job. They stole my social security, so I had to get my social and my birth certificate ordered to my sister's home when I first got out, and she helped me to do that. And then she said she was going to pay for the visit for me to see my son after these people threatened to rape my son. And then when I asked my little sister, I paid for my documents and just had it sent to her home. And then my sister said she was going to pay for the visit for me to see my son. When I asked for my sister to pay for the visit, my sister said she didn't have the money and that she was moving and that I had to hurry up and get out of her house and leave and that I needed to help her pay her rent after only a week or two of being out in that kind of condition because these white people said that I was not pregnant. So now they meant that my sister could lie and say, that, oh, it's okay to keep abusing Andrea and say she needs to go get a job after they tortured her with this baby in her for a whole year and now that I know that she's pregnant and she want her son I'm putting her out of my house pregnant and I'm gonna let the Illuminati kill my sister outside pregnant with a baby and let them get away with saying it was gonna rape her baby and so I when I seen what my sister was doing 
that she didn't want to look at my stomach and tell the truth. That I seen that she still wanted to say that I needed to leave her home after only being there for a week or two. That she wanted to try to say that I didn't have no money or no job and God said she was trying to act like she was better than me because she had money and that Austin was abusing me and my son. So your money don't got nothing to do with anything if you my sister. And then you're using it as an opportunity to go behind my back and then try to plot on me with these white people that have money and you have money and you're my sister. And so I said, I'm not gonna get emotional because I need to get the information while I had the opportunity to get the information. And I need my documents sent to her home again. So now I gotta go into details about how I ended up leaving Shakina's home. So I'm pregnant with this baby and her knowing about it, her knowing that they tried to murder me with the baby in the jail and sending me from her home like that, thinking that she gonna have Cynthia and the doctors in the hospital covering for her knowing about it because she know they still trying to set me up to kill my baby and me a lot. And they still trying to set me up like I'm crazy and they threatening to molest my child. And they still trying to set me up to be killed when you willing to try to cover up my pregnancy and that you threaten to molest my child and you trying to use my family and so-called friends to do it and you trying to use the news and the president Donald Trump to do it. You're trying to do whatever you can to go through with a murder because I shot Austin in the leg because he's white and because I was protecting myself. And so my sister asked me to leave. I was not doing anything wrong in her home. I had been walking miles around her property looking for a job without the social yet because Cynthia took my social out of my home when I was incarcerated for protecting myself from Austin and my baby's birth certificates and everything. And my sister knew that I was not a mental patient and God was saying that she was laughing and making fun of me because I lost my apartment. And when you're a black woman and you lose your apartment, they start stripping you of all all your rights and mistreating you and your children and treating you like you not shit and for your family member to be sitting around laughing while you in jail pregnant with these white people trying to murder you for protecting yourself from this white man in this house and she laughing about what they finna try to do to you when you get out because they made you lose your apartment now they gonna try to rape you and your baby outside and kill your baby in the house and my little sister was laughing about it and then asking me to leave her home in Channel View right before the custody hearing. So this was August, uh, so August, September, between August and September 2019, um, where they were supposed to do the trial date to expose that Austin was abusing me in September. My sister was putting me out of her home, pregnant with the evidence. My body was the evidence. The fact that I was pregnant, leaving your house, the month where the trial was supposed to be, the charges was dropped, you left me, you let me leave your house to be murdered from your home, where they threatened to molest my baby, and this information never come come out and then go on with your life after they done torture me like this. And this man named Colin is involved with knowing about my pregnancy and I'm getting to that. So she made me leave her home and the fact that she wanted me to leave, I left peacefully. So you can't pay me out to be like I'm in your house being loud. And I had to go with a man named Jakeba. And the man Jakeba, uh, they were forcing me to have sex with this man in Chambers County. And I told him I was pregnant and they had a man pulling a gun out on me named Travis Gums. They said he was from the Virgin Islands and these men had charges as well and I went with them directly from Shakina's home and they were trying to starve me. They were shooting. They pointed guns at my head. They pointed guns around me at 2123 Eagle Ferry 